Well, my role at Cisco is to lead uh, the education practice around the world. Uh, we do that by working with the best systems in the world, from Finland to Korea uh, via Canada, uh, to figure out their roadmaps to what they want to achieve, and then providing the technology in an easily accessible form that enables them to achieve it, which might be cloud, might be video, might be collaboration. We believe that technology, broadly speaking, has bounced off education and schools in particular for 25 years. Why? Because it's merely been automating very traditional approaches to teaching and learning. If your teaching model is one person at the front wagging a finger at 30 identical kids, frankly there's not a, not a great deal that the best digital content can do except to amplify that teacher. So what we're doing is looking for innovative teaching and learning wherever we find it around the world. And there's a lot of it being showcased here at WISE over this week. And then bringing the video and the collaboration and the communication technologies, mm -hmm. which will absolutely dovetail to those new forms of teaching and learning. Do it that way, and the technology is no longer automotive. It's potentially transformational. My favourite teaching and learning stories come from your city, New York City. Um, and Cisco became very involved with the iSchool um, in central Manhattan, uh, Chelsea I guess, about three or four years ago. And the formal curriculum was swept away. The year was divided into six parts. And working in groups, students would focus for up to seven to eight weeks on an absolutely critical, real-world problem, multidisciplinary. They would, of course, use the latest technology, but not just because it's lovely and shiny, but because that was the way to bring the world's best experts into their learning space, expert in the things that they were concerned about, which might have been, how do you understand the transmission of genetic disease? Or how do you rebuild the southern tip, the financial district of Manhattan? after 2001. Um, that was inspirational. It was inspirational teaching and learning, but it was student-directed. The question was a big one and an important one. What could be bigger than how do you understand the transmission of genetic disease? But the approach that they took, the way they structured the project, the format that the answer might take, all of that depended on their own passions, their own particular learning approaches. And I think it's when you strike that balance between the passions and the interests of the students themselves and the right big framework uh, which puts exploratory, some would say constructivist teaching and learning at the middle. When you strike that balance right, that's when the magic happens. 